unjustified. Boys club. Embarrassing. Lying. Lies. It was just drinks. He said harden the fuck up. My reputation. He screamed. You can't make jokes. I loved it. Insecure. Successful. I said no. Flattered. Flattered? Legal action. Legal action. Performance management. Performance management? Harden the fuck up. Harden the fuck up. Career. Career. Standard practice. Standard practice. Well, Susan and I worked together at the other company, so when we had a position to fill, she was a perfect fit. We'd always worked well together, done a lot of big deals, we can read each other. You don't have that with a lot of people, it's special. I did find her attractive. She's a very beautiful woman. And we enjoyed each other's company. Well, at least I thought we did. It was a great opportunity for me to move up. I've learned a lot from Davis. We used to joke that we were married to the job and inadvertently we'd married each other. <laughs> we travelled a lot. I mean, that's what sales reps do. It was work. There was a lot of communication. We'd text each other usually to keep up to date. That way we'd be ahead on the next day's calls. I suppose sometimes it was late. I don't deny we had a good working relationship, but that's all. She used to tease me, referred to me as her work husband. We did spend a lot of time together, more nights with her than with my own family. I thought it was platonic. He stepped over the line. On the Melbourne trip, yes, he'd had a few drinks. We were celebrating. Yeah. It was a huge win to get the Selectra deal. He reached over and started rubbing my neck. It had been a long day. I pulled away. I didn't do anything wrong. We were friends. It was mutual. He was charming, and there were lots of dinners and meetings. We had a lot of clients that wanted to meet after hours, and the travel. Another time after the sepia trade show, everyone else had to go, and we stayed on. That was the first time he invited me back to his room for a drink. I was shocked. It's important to celebrate, especially in our business. Davis bought me gifts sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. You know what it's like at conferences. But when I'm back home, I need to spend time with my family. It's different when you're away, the conference atmosphere. Didn't hear her complain about the gifts, the Louis Vuitton. And she was, she was doing all right anyway. She lost her mojo, and you can't reward poor performance. I guess Susan may have felt jilted. Uh, you know, that, that's natural for women. I understand that. But she just wasn't getting the results anymore. He started calling to talk about work a lot, and the text messages were inappropriate. I had to hide them from my partner. He'd not have taken it well had he seen them. I wish I'd kept them now. They were things like, you looked so hot today, no wonder we closed the deal. McIntyre was climbing all over himself to get you into bed. And oh, he'd send things like, today's agenda, short skirt, big deal, sexy. <laughs> the innuendo, it didn't stop. I d didn't want to be rude. I, he had been really good to me. I suppose I felt I owed him. When we were faced with a Milton takeover, we knew there'd be redundancies. Davis was really moody and, and things had changed. I was avoiding him after we'd lost the Digby account. We'd been on the road again and we were heading back to Sydney and we got a call from the office to say that the Digby meeting had been moved to the following day. Davis's family had gone to the farm and he asked me to come over and work on it. 
It was a really big deal and we still had some work to do on it, so I went back to his place. He can be really insistent. I had to make some big decisions. The pressure was really on. Everyone was looking at me. If I didn't maintain the bottom line, heads were gonna roll. Susan wasn't performing anymore. I trusted her with the Digby account, but she blew it. She just wasn't prepared. I tried to coach her, but in the end, I just couldn't make up the losses. You can only carry people for so long. I could have done the work from home. The state conference was the following week and that was also the week that we'd lost the Digby account. It was awkward when we went away to the conference. I was dreading it after the last conference when he rubbed my neck and the night at his place. Things were different between us. We'd been working in different places for the week before the state conference and then the night before the conference I got a text message from him really late saying, oh, really looking forward to seeing you, let's make up for our losses, I've got something to put a smile back on your face if you know what's good for you. <laughs> like I felt sick. I'd worked so hard to get where I was that I I wasn't going to throw it all away, and there is no one you can tell. They'd say, you've brought it on yourself. No, I didn't say anything at all about the text messages. Some of them were really inappropriate. It's not like they made me feel good. It was unwanted attention. I did not want this. It just, it just leaves you feeling you're embarrassed. Heads were gonna roll because of the loss of such a big account and the state conference was where I was gonna to have to face the music. I was damn sure it was not gonna be my head that got the chop. Her whole attitude changed. She started turning up late, leaving early. Something had to be done. And then she goes and cries bully. Performance management is not bullying. She just didn't like being told what to do. You know, I tried to give her the chance and she just threw it back in my face. What am I supposed to do? I'm running a business here. I'm all for women in the workplace. But if they can't do the job, then they have to get out. You can't just run around crying bully because you can't take the heat. It's business. That's when it started to get nasty. The, um, the name calling. <laughs> I couldn't do anything right. Now, Davis has always been a little crude, but his language was foul and it was directed at me. He started screaming at me and putting me down in front of everyone. Oh, that was another of his favorite lines. Let me know when you decide to make an effort and I'll take a photo. That one really cracked him up. Then he refused my application to attend some key conferences and took Monica instead. I'd seen him rip into other people, but never anything like that to me. It's a high pressure job, I know that. I didn't even want to come into work anymore. And I loved my job. I knew I wasn't gonna get the promotion. Well, I couldn't. Nearly all my larger accounts had been handed over to Monica and Glenn. There was no way I could meet my budget, but... I didn't expect to get sacked. I'm one of our top performers. I always was. Then on the day before he gave me notice, he said I was hopeless and I wasted his time. After all I've done for her... Who does she think she is? Lies. It was a fucking joke. A joke! I've got a family. She knew that. It's one hell of a payback. That's what this is. I've put up with this shit for years. The innuendos, the touching up at parties, the crude jokes. Oh my God, the put downs, you know, ha ha ha, it's just a joke. They, 
They get to you. They wear you down. I can tough it out with the best of them, and I have. That's how I've got to where I am. I've worked harder and smarter than all the bastards, and why should I? Someone has to send a strong message. I've treated her the way I've treated plenty of other women. You just do your job, that's all I ask. And I took her under my wing. Without me, she wouldn't have had half the opportunities she's had. It's betrayal. That's what it is. And we were friends. We had fun. I, then pst, sexism. Harassment. Just do the job. You've got to have a bit of fun at work. A sense of humour goes a long way. I never would have picked Susan for a troublemaker. I'm not taking this lying down. I am not taking this lying down. I've sacrificed too much to carve out a career in this business. I've put up with all this snickering and worked harder than any of the boys and put up with their jokes and their sarcasm. I have sacrificed too much to carve out a career in this business. I've got a reputation and I am not going to let some whinging feminist bring me down. She's going to embarrass me, humiliate me like this? I'm one of the best at what I do. Public humiliation. I didn't tell anyone. People don't want to hear it. I didn't hear her complain when it was all beer and roses. You know what they say? She can't cut it, so she whinges discrimination. I've got too much to lose. I'm not going to lose this time. I'm not. I am going to fight this. It's not okay.